मॉर्निंग एवरी वन माई सेल्फ डॉक्टर तकीुल्ला सायर मोहम्मद टूडे आई एम गोइंग टू एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द प्रॉपर्टीज ऑफ मैटर वेव्स ओके द लास्ट लेक्चर आई हैव एक्सप्लेन अबाउट द डी ब्रोगली हाइपोथीसिस ओके सो इट्स ए कंटिन्यूशन ऑफ द लास्ट लेक्चर नाउ हियर सो आई एम गोइंग टू टेक दिस डॉटेड लाइन एंड दिस कलर ओके सो properties of matter waves okay so following are the properties of the matter wave the first one lighter is the particle greater is the wavelength associated with it okay what it means so uh, we have to refer back our uh, relation for the wavelength of matter wave it is given as lambda is equal to h by mv right it is something like this lambda is equal to h by mv okay so here if mass is very very less so lambda will be high if mass is more if the particle is heavier then the lambda will be less so like it's inverse relation similarly once again if v is very high lambda will be less if v is very less lambda will be like reverse it is inverse relation okay so now second point as i have discussed smaller is the velocity of the particle or greater is the wavelength associated with it okay so these are the two points now another is the extreme condition if velocity v is equal to 0 then lambda will be indeterminate or infinite so infinite lambda means how you, you cannot measure the wavelength first of all zero velocity means there will be no wave actually so there is no need of measurement also so there is a no wave if velocity is zero means if something is velocity zero it's not moving so will it is indeterminate now another extreme condition if v is infinite so lambda will be zero so infinite velocity means uh, there practically there is nothing like infinite velocity even uh, photon is traveling with velocity you know velocity of light 3 to 10 power 8 meters per second so infinite means practically not possible that's only we are using it for derivation part and calculation part these are the assumptions only okay so these are the three points which you have to remember if uh, there is a problem if somebody says that uh, v is zero v zero or v is infinite then you should know what will be the lambda right so this shows this shows that matter waves are generated by motion of particle so matter waves are composed of particle only so it it is it will be generated with the help of particles so these waves are produced whether these waves are produced whether the particle are charged particle or uncharged means they, it can be produced by any particle whether it may be charged or uncharged the the reason is that only it should travel it should travel with very high velocity then traveling object will be associated with the wave so it means that it is independent of charge so lambda is equal to h by mv is independent of charge so this fact reveal that these waves are not electromagnetic but they are a new kind of wave okay so electromagnetic wave electromagnetic waves are produced only by motion of charged particle so this is the first slide so now we're going for the second slide okay now we should understand what is wave what is particle so uh, the concept of particle is easy to grasp we know that particle particle means uh, it will be having mass uh, it can be located uh, here and there uh, it will have some definite size or shape and it may be charged it may be uncharged or if if it is accelerated it will move and it will give the force if it will transfer kinetic energy if it stops like there so many uh, things it it 
will be associated with okay so it has mass it it is located at some definite point the particle can be located it can move from one place to another right it gives energy when slowed down or stopped yes of course then if you stop uh, some moving particle it should transfer kinetic energy okay thus the particle is specified by mass velocity momentum and energy whereas we'll check for the uh, wave but the concept of wave is a bit more difficult than that of a particle right why because see a wave is spread over a relatively large region of space it cannot be said to be located just here and there it is hard to think of mass being associated with the wave okay so actually a wave is nothing but rather a spread out disturbance right so a wave is specified by frequency wavelength phase of wave velocity amplitude and intensity so these are the characteristics of the wave and these are the characteristics of the particle so these two different concepts of the same thing like wave particle dualism so now next slide now once again this uh, according to the de broglie hypothesis here according to the de broglie hypothesis a moving particle is associated with the wave which is known as de broglie wave and the wavelength of that matter wave is given by lambda is equal to h by mv or h by p okay so where m is the mass of the material particle v is the velocity and p is the momentum and here h everybody knows 6.625 into 10 power minus 34 joules second so now fourth point the velocity of matter wave depend on the velocity of material particle see here there is something called the wave velocity and particle velocity these are the two different things because how the wave is traveling and how the particle is traveling see here once again this concept you should understand the velocity of matter wave depend upon the velocity of material particle that is it is not constant while the velocity of electromagnetic wave is constant see em wave we have a constant velocity like 3 into 10 power 8 meters per second so electromagnetic wave will travel with constant velocity so the wave velocity also will be constant whereas material particle different particle will have different uh, velocities like some particle is heavy it uh, and it will move with some particular velocity another particle is slight it will move with some other velocity so different particle have different velocities therefore the wave velocity also will be different for example i will show you uh, here with for example, this okay i will take the pen right so this is the wave right so now from this is complete one wave uh, crust to crust how fast a particle is making wave so it is a wave velocity okay now particle velocity means a particle have to cover entire distance then it will be particle velocity wave velocity means to to complete one wave it is a time to take to complete one wave so how fast the wave is forming crust and troughs the wave velocity particle means the particle will move like this like this like this and it will take some time to make a wave so the wave velocity and particle velocity are two different phenomena that will uh, think uh, with the uh, help of the <coughs> derivation part okay so highlighter right so uh, it is not constant while the velocity of electromagnetic wave is constant okay the velocity of matter wave is greater than the velocity of light okay so we will check with the help of relation this can be proved as under so we know that e is equal to h nu right e is equal to h nu we have we, from the uh, first uh, lecture we are <coughs> learning this e is equal to h nu and we know the einstein's mass energy equivalence relation this is e is equal to mc square right so we are comparing these two so h nu is equal to mc square we are taking out v so we are getting this relation here 
now the wave velocity omega is given by omega is equal to frequency into lambda okay so we, we are using here this part and lambda h by mv as already we know what is the value of lambda so this is a frequency is equal to this one uh, mc square by h and lambda is equal to this one right so just simplify some common terms will go uh, here h and h either mass and mass will go so you are going to get this c square by v this is the wave velocity so now you can see this particle velocity cannot exceed the velocity of light and so it will be always less than that this v is always less than the c and this c is already in square so the value of this omega is greater than the velocity of light what i am trying to say the value of omega is greater than the velocity of light why because this is c square this is v so velocity of particle cannot exceed the velocity of light and it will it is always less than the velocity of light and that too it is in a square if you simplify this if you just simplify you will get the more than the velocity of light so omega is greater than the velocity of light so as the particle velocity v cannot exceed c velocity of light hence omega is greater than the velocity of light see this is the fifth property right so next point here sixth point the wave and particle aspects of moving bodies can never appear together in the same experiment as i have told this uh, already in the previous class both the wave and particle nature will not exhibit at the same point it depends upon the circumstances and the treatment at what experiment you are doing so if you are doing a, a photoelectric effect experiment it will behave like a particle if uh, it is you are using double slit experiment young's double slit experiment it will behave like a wave so both the nature cannot exhibit simultaneously or one time in one experiment some depending upon the treatment and the experiment it will behave as a, a particle or a wave so what we can say is that wave have particle like properties and a particle have wave like properties and the concepts are inseparably linked matter waves represent only as symbolic represent, representation okay so the next point seventh the wave nature of matter introduce an uncertainty in location of the position of the particle because of wave cannot be set exactly at this point or exactly at that point see here the nature of matter the nature uh, the wave nature of matter introduces uncertainty so we are going to uh, understand this uh, heisenberg uncertainty principle i'm going to explain uh, you in uh, coming lectures okay so this because the wave cannot we cannot say that wave exactly here or it cannot be uh, there so there will be uncertainty for the location of the particle so in detail i will explain about this concept this seventh point however where the wave is large or strong there is a good chance of finding a particle while where the wave is small weak there is a very small chance of finding a particle so here so these are the two different things we are going to learn in detail in coming lecture okay now uh, this is a topic actually mentioned for the jntu r22 regulation so actually to learn this topic i have taken that lecture that uh, de broglie hypothesis and like that so according to your syllabus this may be asked you in an exam this experiment will be asked okay so division and germers electron diffraction experiment okay so we'll see with the help of diagram also okay the first experimental evidence of matter wave okay so the first experimental evidence of matter wave was given by two american physicist division and germer in 1927 so they also succeeded in measuring the de broglie wavelength associated with slow electrons so actually they have conducted uh, the experiment uh, these two scientists uh, named uh, division and germer 
so they have studied uh, with the help of some reflecting electrons they have made so we'll see the actual uh, experimental setup so they concluded or they proved the wave nature of electron so Davison and Germer were studying the reflection of electron from nickel target accidentally the nickel target was subjected to such a heat treatment that reflection become anomalous okay now the reflected intensity showed striking maxima and minima thus they suspected that electrons are diffracted like x-rays they behave like wave under certain condition so actually we know the elect uh, diffraction experiment from our light chapter so if the if the light is allowed to pass through the small uh, aperture or small opening so the light will bend into geometrical shadows it will have pattern like a, a alternate uh, dumb, like light and dark fringes will form so th this type of things he absorbed in uh, this experiment so he concluded that electron also is behaving like, like or they are like diffracted like x-rays okay okay this is the experiment setup please i will just explain this the experimental arrangement is shown in the figure the apparatus consists of electron gun g see this this hole up to here is something called the electron gun from here to here is electron gun actually this is the filament made up of some special material whatever may be the material okay the thing is that what we have to do you have to heat it's it's uh, considered as a cathode you have to heat give the heat treatment electrically you have to heat it electrically not uh, using uh, some extra you have to use such a high voltage that it should get heated so this heated filament will emit the electron beam or a divergent beam so i told you therm thermionic emission in the previous lectures if you watch my lectures continuously with i have already discussed thermionic emission in the concept of photoelectric effect i told what is thermionic emission so thermionic emission means if you heat the cathode the cathode will emit the electron but in a divergent form it will not pencil light it's just a divergent beam the electron will emit be like like this like this or like this it's a divergent beam okay so what we have to do for example if you have a dimer divergent beam of a light how are you going to converge it you are going to use a lens okay so the light will fall on the lens and it will be like refracted and it will have a common like it's a pencil like a wave and it will focal point something like that so here this is not the light this this is the material particles these are electrons so you cannot use the glass what you have to do you have to use magnetic lenses make magnet so there are these are the some magnetic coils you have to give some magnetic uh, thing so they will deflect and they will convert this diffracted beam into i mean uh, uh, a divergent beam into convergent beam and it will form a fine pencil it's just a fine pencil of electron will be emitted and once again what will happen you have to accelerate this electron you have to give some positive potential to this side so the electron will get accelerated so now it will tar it will hit the target and it will be just deflected the electron will be deflected now this is a sliding thing you have this is the slider now slowly what you have to do simply just move this just move this one so it will uh, check the presence of the electron now the presence of electron will give the current so the current can be sensed through the help with the help of galvanometer i'll also have you uh, given you concept of galvanometer also galvanometer is a uh, electronic instrument which measures the very small current very very small current i will actually micro ammeter can be used but less than that very small if, if the current is very very less also it will give deflection just the it will show the presence of the current okay so this is the complete setup and we'll we'll read uh, line by line okay so come coming in the apparatus consists of electron gun g where the electrons are produced and obtained in a fine pencil 
of electronic beam of known velocity the electron gun consists of tungsten filament so here the electron gun this is the tungsten filament here this is the filament tungsten made up of tungsten heated to dull red so electrons are emitted due to thermionic emission as i have told okay due to the thermionic emission the electrons will be emitted now the electrons are accelerated in electric field of known potential difference so this electrons are accelerated with the help of this potential this positive potential will accelerate the electron after these electrons are collimated by suitable slit obtain fine pencil so you have to obtain a fine pencil collimated beam so you are going to use some magnetic lenses right or magnetic field more uh, clear is that if, if we use magnetic field to collimate to make it converge the beam of electron is directly fall on the large single crystal of nickel known as target t so here this is a target t is a single crystal of nickel and it's fall on this the electrons acting like a wave are diffracted in different direction so because electrons if you uh, accelerate the electron to the high velocity these electron will behave like a wave so it will be diffracted like like a light okay so this the angular the angular distribution is measured by an electron detector or faraday cylinder so this this is the detector please this is the faraday this is complete faraday cylinder okay which is connected to a galvanometer so that uh, thing is connected to the this complete this one is connected to the galvanometer so which will sense the current and it will be shown if the current is present then it will deflect if there is no current it will not deflect so alternatively as you move this uh, this cylinder what will happen you will get some at one point you will get a current at one point you will not get the current at one point you will get the current at one point you will not so you will find a difference and you will find just like a presence and absence of uh, the uh, light in the diffraction experiment similarly you will find the presence and absence of electrons okay the faraday cylinder can move on a circular graduated scale between 20 to 90 degree so here you can move from this 20 degree to 90 degree so you can find the current at different positions to receive the reflected electrons the faraday cylinder consists of two walls which are insulated from each other a retarding potential is maintained between them so the only fast moving electrons coming from the electron gun may enter inside it so the secondary electrons or slow electrons produced by the collision with atom from the nickel target are reflected by faraday cylinder in this way the galvanometer deflection is only due to the electron coming from the electron gun so you can find the deflection from the electron gun okay so so the faraday cylinder was moved on circular scale for given accelerating voltage v the scattering curve showed a peak in the particular direction theta so we'll see the diagram Uh, with electron beam incident perpendicular to the crystal surface the pronounced scattering direction was found at 50 degree for electron accelerator to 54 volts under these conditions the surface row of atom acts like a ruling of diffraction grating producing a first order spectrum of 54 volts electron at 50 degree so here actually at particular voltage and at particular uh, angle the electron will have more effect it will produce a very good uh, uh, ruling like it will produce a first order spectrum of a uh, electrons okay so this is illustrated in this one like see here 
this is the wave at particular angle it will have this is the peak okay So like this, this is the just of the this is a structure of the crystal. So if the light incidents and it is making angle and it will be absorbed at this. So now uh, we'll go for the derivation part. Since interatomic distance of the nickel crystal is known to be this is the interatomic distance. Okay. And interplanar distance is this one d is equal to 2.15 into 10 power minus 10 sine theta so if you just calculate using the formula you'll get one amp strong it's the wavelength okay you can just see this one so here angle theta is the angle between the incident beam and the interatomic plane so so lambda will be this one and according to de Broglie uh, electron wave so lambda is 12.25 we have to use this uh, voltage we are giving 50, 54 volts so we are getting 1.67 Armstrong as a wavelength so in the uh, experiment uh, we have got 1.22 uh, something around uh, similar uh, number we got practically this is the practical theoretically also we have got uh, some value we will check it back okay I think that uh, we're very far, no? Yeah, here it is, matter wave. See, lambda is equal to, if you use 100 volts, we are getting 1.226 Armstrong. This is theoretical. Practically, how much we got just now? one point six seven so these two the two values are in range like it's very near so as the two values are in good agreement hence confirms the de Broglie concept of matter wave so theoretically with the help of de Broglie hypothesis we have told that electron can behave like a wave so with the help of experiment division germer experiment we have proof practically also electron are behaving like a wave with the wavelength one point six around like that thank you uh, very much all the best